story of the week. At zero subscribers, Tom Brady unretired. At 100,000, he unretired. He re-retired. He retired, yep. sorry. What a journey it's been for all of us. Much much less fun for Brady, obviously. Yeah. He probably didn't have this type of ending in mind. If he could do it all over, do you think he would make the same decisions over the last few years? Okay. So, this is where I am going to show... I'm going to take this in a far different direction than I think people expect. So the narrative is that Tom Brady sacrificed things that might have included his marriage in order to pursue football. There is an amazing Seth Wickersham article that came out yesterday that really gives us more details on what happened between he and Giselle than I have seen anywhere. And Seth, who wrote a book on the Patriots, who knows Tom, who's interviewed Tom a ton of times, did Tom versus Tom, all that stuff, basically says it was the football. It was what we all suspected, that the football that she she was fed up with how committed he was to football and how it never seemed like it would end. That it was, you know, that when he won the Super Bowl in Tampa, uh, she said to him, what more do you have to prove? And he kind of blew her off. And they write in the article about how she would, he would, Tom would wake up in the mornings ready to go attack the day. And she would already be mad at him and ask him, is this a family day or a Tommy day? And it talked about how somebody other than Tom Brady said all this. Seth Wickersham wrote all this, but Seth Wickersham wrote a book on Brady before, knows Brady, is a great reporter. It's, it seems if there's, it's not like some tabloid stuff. This is a real journalist that clearly has these relationships, that knows these things. So here's where I'm going to say the, I think, unpopular thing. If you are in the running for the greatest in the history of the world at some point, there is an argument to be made that your responsibility is to your own talent more so than even your wife and children. Doesn't mean you can treat them poorly. Doesn't mean you neglect them, any of those things. But, I, I okay, this is again where it's going to sound crazy to some people. I don't view this that differently than if someone, if the greatest astronaut in the world They were like, listen, man, you're the only person who we can send to Mars. You're the only one who can handle the job. You're going to be gone for four years till you come back. There is an argument to be made that that person has a responsibility to society to take on that charge. And Tom Brady was trying to do things no athlete had ever done. It did not sit well with his wife. That is her prerogative, and she is in a unique position because she was one of the greatest in the history of the world at her thing, and she paused it all for the family. Got it. I think the kids will understand when they get older. I think that there are certain things where it is not the same as if you are a mediocre or mid-level corporate lawyer and you're working 100 hours a week to create no legacy at all because you're obsessed with your job. You are the best ever at something. You had a stated goal. I am going to play until I'm 45. You wanted to reach it. I get it. Now, do some, I, do some, I understand some people feel like, well, but if he would have just retired two years ago, maybe he's still married. Who knows? Certainly, he has the same number of championships. Yes, but you know what he doesn't have? The ability to peace say, yes, the peace of mind to say, I accomplished everything I said I was going to. One of the things he said he was going to do was play until he's 45. He wanted to do that. And again, I'm not, 
I'm not trying to compare myself at all to Tom Brady. I am not the greatest sportscaster in the history of the world. However, what I will say is this. It has been over the last decade of my life, and your mom and I are coming up on our 10-year wedding anniversary and 15 years together, a habitual burr in her saddle, if you will, that there is no level of professional accomplishment that I can achieve that results in me throttling down. That results in me taking my foot off the gas a little bit. She there, there is, she is convinced that the majority of people in my field don't watch all the games. And she's right. She is convinced that I could probably keep up maybe 95% of the accomplishment, success, all of it, with. 50% of the work. And she's probably right. But that's not how I'm wired. And that's not the game that I've ever been in. The game that I've always been trying to play is, will there be a moment in time? I've said this before and I'll say it again. Will there be a single moment in time where if you did a family feud style Ask a hundred sports fans on the street who is the best sports talk guy there is where I get the most votes. I have not gotten there yet. I'm now in the conversation. Now, if you ask a hundred people, I get a few votes, but I'm not Colin. I'm not Skip. I'm not Stephen A. And what can be frustrating for the our loved ones when you are when that is your standard is even if and when you get there you probably then change what you're chasing next and it can be incredibly difficult on the people around you it can be not the best thing for your children i so and again and i'm not brady but i think we have some similarities as far as drive goes and these are the sacrifices you make and the decisions that you make if you truly want to be the very, very best. And you hope that for your children, you there's a couple, there are some positives that come along with the negatives. One is usually some financial independence that you can give them some money, that you can help them out. Another is the foot in the door professionally in places. And another one is that they are inspired or take with them the lessons of how hard you have to work at anything to be great at anything. And so it's like a push and a pull. Like while I was chasing my job, you were spending your senior year of high school without me. I was back and forth on the weekends. That was not good for you. So I have to own that that was a selfish decision by me for what I wanted to do that hurt you. Uh -huh. But the, and I know you don't blame me for that. You don't have hold any bitterness, but I hold bitterness against myself for it. The hope is in the long run, we at least make it even a bit. While I've been chasing my job, your, I, I didn't with Diora, your sister, like, probably push her as hard as I should have on a lot of the like college and school stuff. I was focused on me. And now she's, she's navigating that. And I help her as I can. And I don't know why I'm emotional right now, but like I see the, the stuff people are saying about Brady right now. And I think a lot of it's bullshit. Like, Oh, you sacrificed your marriage to go eight and nine. And I just don't think people understand. These are not easy decisions. These are not easy things. And people know, we know we are at times putting ourselves first in a selfish way that you're not supposed to as a parent. And it's what I learned from my own dad, right? My own dad, who I have massive admiration for, absolutely put me and my sister at times on the back burner to 
negotiating the best bargain possible for the Kansas City firefighters. And his legacy, he's a great dad who I adore. His real life's legacy is not the things he did for me and my sister. His real legacy is the things he did for those firefighters and their families. So like you, you, but you, you have those push and pull things and you make decisions and you deal with the fallout of it. And with, when I, I hope that what your sister missed out on, on maybe I could have helped her a little more academically. She can, I can make up for in maybe when she's pursuing her acting dream, she sees the vigor and the resolve you have to pursue anything with. And that's what I'm sure Brady, I, I, I'm sure that's what Brady is hoping for his kids too. And it's really sad that he and Giselle didn't make it. I, again, we don't talk about these things, but it's public. And I think it's, I, I think it's out there. And I, listen, I hope, I hope somebody, if there's anybody that is in Tom's orbit, that is vibes with this podcast or is aware of it, I hope somebody sends him these last 10 minutes. Because I, bro, I get it. And I, and that farewell video of him alone on the beach, choking up, that's hard, man. Because he has, because it is now over. And now he is just alone with those decisions. And you do wonder, was it worth it? Did I make the right decision? And you don't know. And so I empathize with you, man. And while, you know, I rooted against him about as much as I've ever rooted against any athlete ever, I, I understand what he was doing these last few years. I totally get it. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.